Well, hello again to all the boys and girls out there in YouTube land watching. John and Ellie of Georgia Bear Reviews back at you this evening with a special examination. I'm being joined by Michael Kormoroff up in Brooklyn, and we are looking at the Creature Comforts Tropicalia. It's a 6.6% alcohol IPA. Uh, Creature Comforts is out of Athens, Georgia. And Michael's never had this beer. I've had it many times over the last few years. It's very popular here. It gets very high marks on Rape Beer and Beer Advocate. I believe it gets a 98 out of 100, actually, for the style on Beer Advocate. I never really thought of it as that kind of beer, but uh, Michael and I have been discussing this, so I figured we'd do an examination and review it and see what we think about the beer. Uh, so, Michael, I, well, I, we'll both we'll go ahead and pour up our beers and get right into it. Okay. I was telling John before, my nephew who was down in Atlanta tried this and thought it was a really terrific tropical type IPA. Well, and it's not just him. It gets, you look at the review sites, it gets excellent reviews. It's, um, it, it doesn't necessarily surprise me that it gets great reviews, but I guess, I, I guess I've just had so many great hazy IPAs. And this one here, it pours, it's very clear. A lot of rising carbonation bubbles in mine. Right. One and thing I'll say has, about the Tropicalia, it's it has got a, the packaged on date and the best by date on mine. I don't right. know about yours. Mine was 12, not, let's see, I'll read it again. 12, 12, mine, 12, not, 12, 9, and good till 3, 9. So it's interesting. That, that is it only the exact, has, okay. Well, that makes sense because I sent you, mine is the exact same date. Packaged on December 9th, 2020. Best by 3-9-2021. So they've got a very short shelf life. They, they want you to drink this beer fresh. As fresh as possible. And this one has a little over two months, two month, almost two months on it. Same, okay. same here. Well, we've got the we've got the exact same date. So well, certainly the nose is very tropical. I've been you know sniffing on the front. It's got a tropical nose. You can smell the hops. Cheers, Uncle One. Ethan, cheers to you. G Ethan is one of my fellow Georgian uh, beer reviewers. He he has his own channel, and he uh, he lives in North Georgia, and we get a lot of the same beer. So, yeah, Ethan, I'd love for you to post a comment. What do you think about the Tropicalia? That's what we're reviewing tonight. And Josh uh, Abrams is in the chat as well. Cheers, fellas. Remember to stay hydrated. Your body is a, your body is a temple. Thank you, Josh. We'll try to do that. <laughs> After, after we drink this. I like I, the nose on it. It's got a nice nose. It's very fruity. It's kind of like, uh, I guess if I was just going off of the aroma, I would say it's more on the juicy side, less on the West Coasty side. It's got some like tangerine hop aromas and maybe a little bit of that caramel malt action, but it's mostly on the juicy side. I'm not getting anything, any of the grapefruit. Um, maybe a little pineapple, almost a little tropical. That's, a, that's what I. That was the first thing I got. Yeah, but it smells really good. Um, so I'm interested. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see what you think about this. This is one that you go to the gas station, uh, and you get two of the 16 ounce cans for like four seventy five or five bucks. It's it's actually it's like a, it's everywhere here. It, you go to the, it's not just crap beer stores and the the package stores. You can go to any gas station in my area and probably in a lot of parts of Georgia and get the two for five deal with the sixteen ounce cans of the Tropicalia. So it's well, very good popular. Deal. That's a good deal. So I'm ready to get into it. I know you are. Cheers, Michael. Hey, cheers, John. I'm going to take another sip. The first thing I get, honestly, when I take a sip is is that tangerine citrus with the pithy, bitter, pithy bitterness right after that. 
it's it, not a bad thing at all, but there's definitely it, – it's a it's a nice juicy IPA, but there's definitely that grapefruit, that pithy, bitter note that's in there. Now, do you, does that bitter note turn you off because you're not a big IPA drinker? Or a not? little, a little bit, a little bit. I, I don't want to take away from the style and what they're doing with this beer because I think it's outstanding. And I was shocked, honestly, when I saw that the rate beer and beer advocate ratings were like 95 plus. Uh, but I, I do, uh, I get it. And maybe I've been spoiled because I'm here where I live. I drink this beer a lot and it's almost become like a macro beer for me. Like I drink it like I would drink a Budweiser. I buy the two for five all the time when I'm, when I'm coming home from work, it's like, if I had a choice, it's like, all right, I could buy two for five of the big, uh, you know, Schlitz malt liquor, or I could get two for five of the Tropicalia. I'm going with the Tropicalia. So Maybe. I feel like my palate has been a little bit spoiled. I'm kind of I'm numb, or, or I'm I'm used to this because I buy it all the time. So that's what, one of the reasons I'm so interested to see what you think of it. But being that I'm a more of a New England type IPA guy, this is kind of in the middle, which is nice because you get the pineapple and you get some of the tropical fruit notes. But there is that pithiness. There's that grapefruit, that tangerine citrus note. Um, but it drinks. It's it's six point six percent, so it drinks like like a session. It really drinks like a session. So it's kind of the best of everything. Um, and for me, it's kind of hard to rate because I'm. I guess because I'm numb to it. I'm so used to it. But I guess if you're not used to this type of beer being widely available as a borderline macro type product then i guess it would be confusing to you or new to you or you wouldn't really know where to place it but it's just it's one of those things that i i, I guess i'm just numb to i don't know it seems like it's like a hybrid between an east coast and a west coast because the it bitterness, is the bitterness is west coast the juiciness is more east coast but it's not hazy as a lot of the east coasts are it's pretty clear so it might have a mild chill haze on it. That's about it. And then it goes away. And um, see, I like the bitterness because I'm more of a West Coast style person. But I have to say that the East Coast ones, these um, hazy ones, I do like too, which are not bitter. I like those as well. But this, this is a very, I'll tell you the truth. This is a surprising beer for me. Really? But it's very good. It's, I think, I think with what I'm saying, it's kind of, it was surprising for me at first and I'm so used to it. I'm kind of numb to it because I drink it a lot. Uh, it's, it's kind of become my macro because I can get like two of the, the big cans for $5 or less, depending on where I go. It's everywhere. I go to Johnny's Pizza. I go to Taco Mac. I can get it on draft for 16 or 24 ounce for less than three bucks. So it's very commonplace here. I don't want people out there watching to, I don't want them to think that I'm trying to take away from the quality of the beer. I do really enjoy this beer. Well, I don't think now I'll be honest. We, we're not, we're not going to rate it. We're going to sip it for a while before. I right. don't think this is in the 98, 99 area. No, I don't it. agree. Thank you. Yes, I'm glad you said that. I don't agree with the beer advocate 98 out of 100. I do think that this is an excellent sessionable. It's 6.6, .6, which is, you know, it's getting up there and they, you know, close to Imperial. But everybody in America now, we're all drinking, high, we're all drinking higher gravity stuff now. Um, this is about as sessionable as it gets for the, for the, the juicy, IPA and it's kind of like you said it's kind of like it's not one way or the other it's kind of like a mix of those of a west coast and a juice bomb a new england juice bomb um i think they do it very well it's clear it's very filtered you're not you're not getting any you know sediment or haze to it it's a clear easy drinking crisp ale uh, the pithiness that you talked about is there. 
the the tropical fruit with the pineapple is there ever so slightly and then you get into that grapefruit and that pithy character with maybe a touch of the pineiness but it's kind of in between it's really not a west coast it's really not a, a new england style it's kind of in the middle which for me is hard to rate um but i think as a everyday drink i think it's a great around here like i said it's on tap everywhere it's a great beer to drink for you know hey when you get off work you go to a bar give me a tropicalia on tap it's it's that type of beer it's a great alternative to budweiser pbr or it's a mat you know it's, it's a great alternative to a macro for somebody that's into craft beer like myself and you because it's got that extra flavor character but it's not too bold it's not gonna blow your socks off but at the same time it's gonna it's gonna keep it you know in that that nice ease that that range where it's like all right this is a great easy drinking beer and it may fall into that a range but it's not blowing my mind either it's like right it's just a perfect session beer that's the way i look at it I'm enjoying it, to be honest. And I guess um, sometimes I guess you look at the ratings of these of Beer Advocate and then rate beer, and you kind of wonder sometimes what they're, where they're coming from, because there's a difference between world class and an A beer. There is. Yeah. It can be an A beer without being world class. For me, and I, and I think this is an A beer. I'm not. I, it's it's an A. It's not an A minus. It's an A beer for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad you got to try this because initially when I when I sent you that first pair, I'm like, well, I don't think it's worth sending it because it's like it gets all these high marks and it's a great beer, but is it worth like sending? You know, like there's other stuff I'd rather send you for the most part. Well, um, the, the funny part about this is my nephew is really into tropical ones, and that's yeah. why he loved this so much because he said so many of the beers that he drinks are just grapefruit bombs or these other flavors that he doesn't really like. So this one was more pineapple-y and more tangerine, so it was lighter. The, where it's not, he doesn't like those grapefruit forward ones, right? The interesting one interesting thing about this beer too is if you look at the date, they have the package shown and the best by date. It's a three month shelf life. They're they very to drink it fresh. They're very proud of they they're very proud of that. It's like we want you to drink this beer within three months of us. But so they obviously feel like it's it's an awesome beer and, and the hop character and all of that. You want to drink it in that three month window. Which I can, I appreciate that. I love that they put the package on and the Best by Date. I don't know if you can make it out on your can, but I can clearly make it out on I my can, can. I can see it. I can see it on mine, too. I looked at and it before when I first, when I I first just, took I, it out I of the refrigerator. That, I looked at it. Yeah. I, I looked I, at the I bottom love, of the can, so I looked at it. Are you formulating a number? Because if you want, I'll go first. I am definitely formulating a number. I will say that uh, before you give your number, I want to just say that I love what they do with this beer. I love the fact that they have the short shelf life. You will not find a beer out of date with the Tropicalia. They, whereas where I live, they 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 will take it off the shelf. So they're very proud of their product. I appreciate that. I just find that the 98 out of 100 is extreme. I think it's a great session beer. We get it at all the local joints here. And I, I would much rather drink this than a Budweiser or a Bud or any of the macro stuff. So it's a great, great beer here because it sell it outsells the macros here because that's what they're going for. But other, I can't say that it's a, like 98 for me, that's world class. 98, 99, 100, that's world class. I'm not going to go as far to say that. But that being said, I want to hear what what do you, what's your rating for this beer? I'm going to give it a 95. So I do think it's a solid A, and I do like the flavor profile a lot. But the yes. difference between a 95 and a 98 to me, those it's a big points, that's a big those gap. Are, those are pivotal points. I can think of the six point ones that I've had being much better than this. 
the different ones. A couple of, that you've had also. You've had those six point ones. Those can be 96, 97. This one, this one just doesn't go that extra step to me. Right. Yeah. I agree. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one point. I'm gonna go with a 96. Okay. I I think it's a most excellent beer. I, I like that it's it's the perfect blend of the juicy and then the West Coast with the with the grapefruit and a little a little bit more bitterness. Um, the short shelf life really kind of makes me very happy because of where I live. So I always know wherever I go, we get this on draft. So take take your score and add two points because this on draft, it's it's better. Um, okay. So we get this on tap everywhere here and it's 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 the most popular beer in my area we, i could go to any restaurant any bar they have got the tropicalia on tap so this is this is like the budweiser of this of is georgia. the budweiser of the south it really it's a but well the budweiser of georgia i don't want to say the south but the budweiser of georgia um and it's really awesome and yeah it, it's it's better it's probably like a 97 on draft on tap but i'm gonna go with a 96 i i get what they're doing here the fact that they have that short date range really impresses me they, they, they're doing they're doing god's work here with with the beer i mean it's it's like it's really good um and there's not a lot of craft breweries in my area that the date well the first of all the date range it's very it's more widespread this is the only beer from the from Creature Comforts and from any any brewery that I can think of in Georgia, where I live, that I get distribution to, where the day range is so specific. They're very proud of their product, and they want you to drink it fresh. And if you're not drinking, and you know, if it's out of date, they don't. You know, that's it. They pull it. I have never had an out of date Tropicalia. It's always spot on. The date range is very limited, and they always deliver. They always deliver with their beer. So I think I think it's. I'm happy you sent it to me. Well, yes, I'm glad you got to try it. I kind of was thinking, you know, like the first time I, I sent you beer mail, I was like, well, I couldn't, you know, I sent you the the automatic pale ale, which is also a very good beer, but the Tropicalia is the is their namesake. It's it's the date range. For for this beer is very specific. All their other beers they don't have they don't have the very you know strict date range. They put the canned on date and the best by date, and it's a three month window. So, so they're this, very this proud of. They're obviously very proud of of what they're putting out. This is their flagship beer, I guess, is what exactly. you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, ninety five, ninety six. Yeah, it's an excellent beer. It's kind of a of a hybrid beer. It's six point six, but if you're, you know, if if you're just drinking it, it drinks like a session, but it's got obviously it's got more alcohol, but it's got that. It's not too bitter, you know. I find a lot of times with the West Coast IPAs, you get that lingering bitterness that it just dries out your palate, and it makes the drinkability not very high with this one you get the juicy notes like you would get with a new england ipa and then you get the a little bit of the grapefruit and the pithy pithiness but it doesn't linger so it doesn't diminish the drinkability of the beer so it's kind of the best of both worlds i guess you could say between the new england style and your traditional IPAs, your West Coast IPAs. It's kind of like the best of both worlds. I'm enjoying it for sure. All right. And cheers to you, John Womack. Cheers to everybody in the chat. We appreciate it. Uh, this has only been 20 minutes. I guess I we guess have we, have we have some other important things to discuss. Tomorrow, unfortunately, there aren't going to be too many people over, but I'm having my monthly yes. get together. So it's just going to be Gail, who you've seen, and Audrey and I, who you have seen as well, and this other guy, Eric, 
who who comes. He's a younger guy, and he he works during the day, but then he comes over, and that's it. So it's gonna be four of us. So I'm go I'm going into twelve ounce beer bottles and cans versus you know sixteen ounce or bigger. And Gail's gonna bring a couple of pint cans, but if I do twelves, and Eric will probably bring a couple of pint cans too, or maybe twelve ounce cans. I don't know. It'll just it means we'll probably drink less individual beers. But um, like I told you last month, I think or the last time we did one, I'm trying to feature more dark, you know, more dark beer stouts, a porter, and maybe um, I do have a hazy IPA. Have you ever gotten anything from Peak P E A K? It's in Maine. I don't know if they have national distribution. No, I don't. I don't think I have. Okay, I got a. I have a hazy IPA that I got from the co-op from them. I think it's a good idea always to have a hazy IPA because you can't do all dark stuff without breaking it up. Gail is bringing stuff from that pints of love. Remember the pints of love thing? Yes, from right. That, that, her, that her son did. So I have all the same can she has. So I'm not doing any of those. And since she's bringing pints, I'm going to try to stay to just you know, 12 ounces to try to right. limit the volume a little bit. Audrey and Gail tend to be more, you know, they take about two ounces of each beer and Eric and I split the difference. Now, when we had Brian here, he's not coming, but when we had him here, he could at least handle some volume. So it made a difference in doing it, but it, it's always fun. And um, it'd be interesting to see. I'm doing the um, North Coast Old Rasputin as one of the beers that oh, really? I'm doing the yeah. one that I did on stout Sunday from flying dog, which was at 7.4 ounce um, milk stout. I'm doing the McKesson, which I've done on a stout Sunday, which is another British ale similar to Guinness, but I thought, I think it was actually more tasty and that's also a session one. i um, trying to think what else I'm doing. Let me get out my thing. I have a pumpkin ale, but the way it works out, since I have these assigned slots, I bring extra beers, but you'll reach a point where everybody starts getting full. In other words, after they've been doing it for a while, and then we just have to stop. I always have extra beer down here in case I have to go refrigerated to get more, but um, it never see. I always have enough upstairs, whatever. So I have Sierra Nevada Oktoberfest from this land from yeah. 2020 but it's getting to the point now where i'm kind of wondering if that is going to start becoming date sensitive now because it probably since it's an Oktoberfest, came out you know end of summer early fall so that's getting old I, that's the last beer i have on my list maybe i would only use that in an emergency but i i was going to originally if brian was coming going to do the Roddenbach which I have a big can of Rodenbach, but I'm going to save that for next month. And I also remember I bought that case of the Black is Beautiful, so mm -hmm. I was going to consider doing one of those. But it's a 16-ounce, 14%. It's almost like when you're introducing beers like that in a small group, you're increasing kind of like a risky thing that, you know, you're going to – I'd rather do more beer and save that for more people – you know, when I have six or seven people, so more people can try it. The other thing I was going to mention to you, six point because of beer week. I, I think I told you I got an extra Cojito Cowboy. As that was the beer that I got from six. You did I'm yes. really happy. I still had some left, but an extra one, which I think Bryce wants, my daughter. So I'll probably just give it to her. It's her birthday on Sunday, so we're going to go celebrate. I'll probably bring that beer over for her. I still have a couple of them here. Right. But six point now for beer week is offering a 17% break if you buy four packs of their beer. But I have to find out if it has to just be one one beer because I, I, I won't do it if I have to pay shipping. So they make right. you buy a whole case, which would be six four packs. If I can mix it and buy six different beers of four pack of each or buy two cojito cowboys and four others then i'll do it but if they see if they just if the way they set it up for free shipping 
to Cojito Cowboy, I think is um, $6 a beer. So it turns out to be 24. I bought the Black is Beautiful, which is the same price, a case of it. And it was free shipping. But if they if they let you mix and match, because they have a um, couple of IPAs, they still have that four bean, you know, the one that's barrel aged. I think that's twenty dollars right. for a four pack, and they have also a rye barrel aged beer as well. So I'd like to get one four pack of each thing plus a couple of the Cajito Cowboys, and if they're willing to do that, and I don't have to pay shipping, I think I'm going to do it. That sounds okay. good. Totalitarian espresso stout by Stone. I've never seen yeah. that. Bearded one is yeah. He's he's wow. Some awesome stuff he's got. Okay. Right? The thing I've always liked about the North Coast Old Rasputin, it's only 9%, so it can't really get up with the big beers sometimes that we have, you know, the 14% right. and stuff. But for 9%, it's really a well-brewed beer, and it tastes like a Russian Imperial Stout. So it's not like um, you're going to say it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. And that's yeah. kind of important when you put when you put this stuff together. And... Um, I've always liked that beer. I've had that on tap too. Very good beer, for sure. Wow. Yeah. There you what go. kind of stuff have you been doing? Um, I was on Beer and Cheese last night with um, Beer Man oh. and the rest of the group <laughs> for the first time. And I, I, I thought yeah. it was a little bit interesting. Yeah, no, that was great. Uh, I try to, you know, do it as much as I can with all these different things, but. With work and everything, it's, I mean, there's literally, it's, it's great if you're a beer guy because there's something every night. If you can't join one night, there's something another night. Like uh, Ron Terrio couldn't do his show tonight. He's got had the baseball, the baseball or whatever. Eric did his Wild Card Wednesday, and then we've got this going on. Uh, beer Man did a malt show earlier. Bumpy was on there, the couple other people where you're right. drinking a beer and you're talking about the different malts in the beer. Um of course, you've got Multi Monday, you've got South Sunday, you've got uh, the Wild Card Wednesday or the theme shows on Ron's channel. You've got Thursday. What's, Thursday. The, what's the ABV is on what's now? ABV? I mean, there is literally something. The best part about what we do is that there is literally something every night. We're all kind of inner. We're all connected. We've all we all support each other. So there's always something to do. There's always a good time going on with with the beer. Um, it's, 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 it's a great time. Um, and then of course, Friday, Friday, you've got the, uh, more liberal stuff with the, you know, Friday, I throw down and the, uh, food Friday, food Friday, free, free, you know, all, all that stuff. And then CBP and Trish doing the, you know, uh, it, it's just, it's an amazing time. I, it's always great to be able to do this type of stuff and hang out with people, that are like-minded, that are into their beers, their wine, their liquor, whatever. Uh, it's it's a great time, and we always have fun and support each other. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we got the bearded one, we got drunk. I mean, we got a bunch of everybody in the chat right now. We also, you know, it's it's great. It, the, the support is wonderful. Bumpy Road as well. Um, everybody in the chat that's supporting us. We, we all kind of collaborate on different things bumpy road with his for example bumpy road multi monday you got the after dark beers on sunday night um and then you know uh drug and one who uh he's he's just all over the place he's like a leech you know you can't get he's he's all over the place uh ethan he's he's in north georgia he does beer reviews uh john womack you know Let's see who else. Uh, Josh Abrams, who has been joining us on all these different things. Hopefully, he'll start his own beer channel soon. Calling you out, Josh. You need to do it. Brian in um, Aurora, Colorado, comes on the thing. Brian Chatio. Hey, look, I'm wearing my Chatio. I got a Chatio shirt. Got my Chatio shirt on tonight. Yeah, we have a great community. It's nice to be able to do this type of stuff. And collaborate with our fellow YouTubers and beer and craft beer drinkers. It's always a good time. Uh, so, you were mentioning that you will try to get together with a bigger group. The other yeah. beer you sent me from Founders, besides the Fudge one, to oh, do a group, the a Panther group examination. Yeah, 
Yeah, we can do that. Uh, there's no rush with it. But, yeah, the Panther Cup, the uh, Maple Bourbon Barrel Age Stout. Which that, is that sounds really good. I'd never heard about that until you sent it. I well, I know you, I know it's not as easy for you to get founders as it used to be, so I figured I'd send that one to you. It, take take the um, founders porter, the dark, rich, and sexy porter, which I know you've had. Barrel age that and add a little bit of maple syrup, and that's what you get with the Panther Cub. It's it's incredible. It really is an awesome beer. So we'll do we'll plan. And you got the pontoon one as well. The fluffy otter, which yeah, we could do that. I was I was thinking about doing that one tonight with you, but I couldn't find it. I think I drank the last one I had. My I'll have to go buy another four pack, which is fine because it's everywhere here. But I thought <laughs> I guess I drank my last one. Um, but anyway, have yeah. you been have you been looking for evil twin stuff? Not yet. When I go, so. Within the next week or so, I'll let you know. I, I, okay, I, know I, can have, get it. I know I can get it, but it's not available in noon. And I have to go to Peachtree City or Fairburn to get it because they don't they just don't sell it here in in town. It's not but I can go to the big like Total Wine and More, for example, or I, I can get it. It's just okay, not because I have here. I have several and even if I don't have the exact one you get, we can do oh, yeah. a general evil. I love twin. I love evil twin. So that's like a no brainer for me. I thought, yeah, we can we can do that. I, was thinking, I mean, I can. I'm going to send you some more beer. Too. I'm going to try to get back to my thrifty and get some Lithuanian beer. I'm going to get the highest alcohol one I can find. Maybe they have. I think they have a 16. I'm going to get that. Right. There's no sense getting you one that's 13 because technically you could still get it. Right. So, you never know. <laughs> oh, bearded, bearded one. I've been away. I'm in school and work makes the hobby hard, but I do plan to come back to the community eventually and restart my channel. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, do what you got to do. Family, I mean, school, obviously, education, doing what you, you know, that's all takes precedence over this. But yeah, that's one. Yeah. Get back into it, man. Craft beer is, it's just fuel for the soul. It's, it's interesting because I'm retired, so I'm in a little bit different position, but I'm still married. So it's not like I can just tell Audrey, hey, I'm doing this full time. I'm, doing yeah. every, I'm going on every I'm going on every night because hey, look, you have to you have to weigh out your lifestyle and you have to be fair to sanity. You can't just say, well, you know, this is it. It's a hobby. And yet it's a great right. hobby. I enjoy doing it. But I mean, you have to be a well-balanced person. And if you have another life going on, you have to give to that life too. And I have right. a daughter, so we get together and stuff. And she knows, I mean, I mean, she's known me all her life. So she knows that I've been into craft beer for a really long time. But I think the fanatical side sometimes does does even bother Audrey because you know, she almost says, You're so fanatical about it. But I just enjoy it. I like the whole, I like the whole craft beer scene. And some of the people that you meet on it are a lot of fun, and you have a really good time. And um, I like having the ones that I, you know, host here. I like the ones at the beach club. This year at the beach club is going to be better because now that everybody's getting vaccinated, I think by the summertime it will be less fearful. It, are they saying anything to you with your company that they want you to get vaccinated? Have you heard anything? No, they're still. Obviously, they would like us all to be vaccinated, but they're not saying anything because it's a it's a, it's a touchy subject. You look at religion, you look at like personal belief, you know. So they haven't they haven't come out and said we think you should get vaccinated again. Everything is still kind of well. You're not considered a health worker because you're doing a service, but it's not the same as if you were. A nurse, or you are. Uh, let's see, well, I, I, I think maybe because I'm in home health, it makes it a little bit different because I'm not in the hospital all day or whatever. Right. But they have made it. They have, or they have made it very clear that they want us to get vaccinated. Okay. Well, wow. it's your, it's your choice. It's a freedom. It is. Audrey, Audrey has not done it. So, and she's. Yeah, I haven't done it yet. But 
So the Johnson and Johnson vaccine was approved. It's a one shot right. thing, one, one time. And you know, I'm 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 okay with that. Um, once I the, the numbers are still coming in, but I mean, I don't know anybody. The conspiracy theorists out there that are like, oh, it's you know, it's the government is going to control you. It's going to you know, whatever. It's look. It's it's safe. It's effective. They've proven that for whatever. I understand the hesitation for older people to not want to get it. Um, and if you live alone and you're not exposing yourself, you're not going out a lot, whatever, then don't get it. Why? Why bother? You, but you don't have to. for most of the people that are at risk, it's, you know, high exposure. You're going to be out in public. Uh, the mask mandates have been lifted in several states, Texas, uh, and, and Alabama, Miss, Mississippi, uh, Mississippi, Mississippi too. Alabama. Okay. So the mask mandates are gone now. So no more mask wearing Georgia. We never had that. I mean, Georgia is like, you can go anywhere without a mask except for my job. So it's kind of comical to me because I look at it. It's like, well, we've been doing this for months, but okay. So we're getting back to normal. Whatever. Right. Um, so fine. So so I, I guess I, I think I think I told you, John, my daughter was activated by she works at the Department of Health in high schools as a sexual yeah. educator. So since she works at the Department of Health, they activated her to work in these pods where they give the vaccines. So yeah. right when she went, she figured she was at greater risk because even if you're wearing a mask, you're doing so many more people exposed to them so she decided yeah. she's only 30 she's going to be 32 on um sunday but she decided for her own safety to do it and i understand it and her boyfriend right. decided to do it as well chris he decided to do it also i'm good i'm 70 already and i decided that i wasn't willing to take the risk audrey is willing to take the risk and that's a personal decision you know right she said if they wouldn't let her come to the beach club without it she would take it so it shows you that it doesn't cross the line so she probably would take the johnson and johnson shot because it's only one she wouldn't have to go for two separate ones which is a good thing i guess a little, little bit easier to to get through it uh, yeah absolutely i'm sorry my contact popped out i had to put it back in my back in my, my contact just popped out uh you got all right. it back in? yeah i got it back in i got it back in now but yeah, um, okay, so we've been going 37. Uh, all right. If you want to go off, we can. I can we, talk another 10 minutes. I mean, yeah, we can go off air here. Uh, everybody out there, thank you for watching. Um, the Tropicalia, if you can get it in your area, it's definitely worth a shot. It's a very popular beer here, and it's kind of like become that sessionable draft beer that most people get when they go out to their bars, pubs. I mean, that's the Tropicalia, it's available. Uh, so 95, 96, it's definitely in the A range for sure. It's a wonderful beer. Um, thank you, Michael, for joining me. I'm glad you got to try it finally. Thank you to everybody Thanks in the chat. Good. Absolutely. Thank you to everybody in the chat for stopping by and commenting, and we will see you all on the next one. Until then, cheers, everybody. Everybody take care.